Those lights are bright. <laughs> well, anybody have anything to say about that video? Yeah. They played that video when I was at another event. And of course, anybody who'd seen it for the first time was bawling, including me. And the message there is so powerful, so powerful. I'm going to cry now. Um, that it, if you want something bad enough, you're going to do everything possible to get it, right? You guys agree? Yeah. And, you know, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody for being here this morning. I know it's early on a Saturday morning. We'd probably rather be sleeping, but you're supporting your friends and family, and that's awesome. So thank you for being here. And, you know, it's such an incredible thing that we have the ability to share our stories. Now, I won't ask you if you've been through challenges. I know you have. We all have. But do you agree that when we have the opportunity to share our challenges and our experiences, that we might just help somebody else? Do you agree? Yeah. And if we have the opportunity to do that, because a lot of us don't, but, or, or we think we don't, but we do. We have the opportunity to help people. And writing a book or being part of a compilation where we share these things is one opportunity to be able to do that. And that's why we put the book together, is because this is an opportunity where we can share challenges that we've gone through, but not because we want to share the challenges, but because we want to share the journey to success and happiness and be able to share with people, what did we do to get through that? Because I'm sure everybody knows somebody who's stuck and they don't know where to turn, what to do. And when we share our stories, there might be something that we did that somebody else didn't think about doing or never tried or never thought they should try it because it wasn't going to work. And they already decided that. Right? You know, the self-defeating prophecies where we've already decided things in our own heads. So we don't even go forward and try them because we already think they're not going to work. So we don't even take the chance. You agree? So being able to share these things with others and give them hope and give them uh, choices, some tools and resources. So maybe they might try what we did and it might work for them. And that is the whole purpose, so that we can hopefully make the world a better place, make people happier and more successful, whether it's personally or professionally. So thank you again for being here. I want to congratulate all our amazing authors. You guys are fantastic. OK, you hit number one, woohoo, <laughs> which is pretty awesome. And uh, we have some alumni here. I know some of our alumni are in the second book. And we have uh, Patty Levesque over there, who's here from the first book as well. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and she'll be doing a couple introductions of some of our authors, as well as a couple other of our alumni will as well. And we are going to have an awesome, amazing day. So are you guys ready to hear from our authors? Yeah? OK, fantastic. So, wow. Um, the experience is quite incredible. I'm moving off to the side because this light is very bright. And every time I try looking at some of you in the middle, I'm seeing light. <laughs> so, and Brinton's telling me to go back, but I don't want to. <laughs> it's shining on me. <laughs> um, so we are videotaping. So just so you guys know, I know you signed a release out front, but we are videotaping. Uh, you will be able to see all the author segments, or for those of you who have people at home who may have not or not been able to be here, can still see the clips of their loved ones or their friends of, of their presentation on stage. So pretty awesome. Well, 
burnout is basically the concept of the second book. And it's all about things that we go through in life. And sometimes we just get run down or tired or we go into overload. Does that happen to anybody? You don't have to put up your hands, but you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> yeah, all the authors are, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we do things in life. So whether it's a lot of charity work or it's a lot of giving to other people or it's focusing on your needs and not my needs, or maybe you work too many hours in a day and too many days a week and too many years in a row and you just get exhausted and overloaded. And it doesn't mean that you break down. That's not necessarily what happens, but maybe you might go into a depression. You might have a physical illness that kicks in because you're not taking care of yourself or something else could happen. Maybe you have a mental breakdown or you know something can happen to you or you're not taking care of your family properly or something starts to lack do you guys agree something in your life starts to lack when this happens and being able to get through that how do we get through that well sometimes we have a great uh, network of people around us who are very supportive and they can help us through or guide us to what we should be doing. Is that counseling? Is that uh, you know some kind of program? Is it taking personal and professional growth courses or books or what is it? What is that thing that we need to get past what we're dealing with? So um, you know, in in my life. I did a hell of a lot of charities. I was actually home for 15 years raising my kids. I have four boys who are now 16 and a half to 21. And it was exhausting. I mean, I was completely involved in the schools. There were three schools at one time. I'm chair on one, I'm on the committee on another one, I did the barbecues, we took them from these little teeny tiny barbecues that the secretary used to organize with M&M Meats, and we made them into huge fun fairs. So I was very, very involved. I did years and years of charity galas. I mean, you name it, I was out there. I pissed my husband off like you wouldn't believe with all this stuff I did for the community, okay? <laughs> and it comes to a point where, you know, you can go and go and go on adrenaline for so long, and then at some point you get exhausted, right? At some point it catches up with you and you get exhausted. And eventually it happened and it was like, okay, you know, here's the separation in the marriage, here's the, you know, here's the downfall, right? So now what do I do? And now it's going out into the world and figuring out, what do I do? How do I lift myself back up? How do I get into the scheme of things in the real world? I mean, I was already in the real world, but you know, getting back into the workforce and all that kind of stuff. But what was that? What was it that helped me through? Well, I'm lucky that I'm very self-motivated, and a lot of people are and a lot of you are, and sometimes we're not, or sometimes we get into a rut, a, our own mental rut, and we can't get out of that rut. So what do we do? So I sought out personal growth. I started getting into that, which is kind of funny because my ex was always teaching people personal growth. So I kind of felt like there were all these years where I had a different focus, that was exhausting me. Plus, don't forget the four kids at home, right? Four in diapers at one time, <laughs> okay? So, you know, you're exhausted. He's got the personal growth thing going on already. I felt like, okay, well, I didn't really start kicking into it seriously until I was in my 40s, right? I separated at 40 years old and then start to get into that. So. I really dove into the personal and professional growth to figure out who am I? What do I want to do? What am I passionate about? And taking those steps 
I found something that I'm passionate about. I found something that when I wake up in the morning, I don't feel like I'm going to work. Do you guys feel that way sometimes when you're going to a job that you just feel like you're going to work, you're working for someone else. But if you're doing what you're passionate about, then you don't feel like you're going to work when you wake up in the morning. Do you guys agree? Yes. Yeah, for those of you who are doing what you love right now, you know what I'm talking about. And I won't peg you out. But <laughs> um, you know what I mean where you just love to do it. And you'll do it all day and all night long. You don't care, right? And I want you guys, and I know a lot of you are there already, but I want you guys to be in that place where you wake up in the morning doing what you love, but you're not burning out, you're not exhausting yourself, you're able to put food on the table for your family, you're able to put uh, you know, a roof over their head and not ignoring these things by maybe doing too much volunteer work and not enough time on work that actually brings you income or residual income. Make sure you are spending time on you. Make sure you're giving back to yourself. No matter what you do in your life, do what you love, but absolutely, I can't stress this anymore, make sure you take time for you. It's got to be the most important. Your growth, you don't help anybody else if you don't help yourself. You need to make sure you're exercising, you're eating properly, you're doing all those wonderful things, you're feeding your brain, because we don't want Alzheimer's when we're old either, right? <laughs> but make sure that you are focusing on you and not just the people around you, because you're no good to them if you aren't at your peak. So thank you again for being here today. I'm not gonna keep talking anymore. I'm gonna give the floor to our authors. And I am so excited for that noise. And now I'm out. <laughs> I back on? Really? Okay. I'll talk loud. But Natalie, you're getting a handheld mic, so.